he's getting that a couple of things to go over uh just some <laughs> kind of some kind of settings for the game uh just kind of a few things uh to talk about so the first thing is like pvp stuff like uh stealing from party members fighting with party members um do you how do you all feel about that would you rather it be uh nah. like wide open would you rather it be kind of like more for story based um like how, what's what's your thoughts on that uh, uh, if it was story based and we can't okay. just do it like at yeah, any time so if it's more of like a good reason you can't just like be a jerk and steal people's stuff in your party yeah, yeah. so it's usually uh, the best way to do it because then like yeah, yeah you have parties i don't want to fight pvp i don't want us to yeah that's i don't think that'd be so if there's a reason story wise uh for it to happen we can talk about it yeah but basically that just means all that stuff has to be on like player approval so like you can't yeah, go oh, fight okay. or steal from someone unless the other person agrees that that would be like good for the story type okay thing. yeah that sounds good yeah, yeah that's oh. usually my preference because it's supposed to be a, a team game uh difficulty i'm gonna say we should probably keep it on medium especially with new players uh does anyone have like off limit just bump top? it up man huh you say you I'm want sorry. it harder? No, no, no. Sorry, no. <laughs> just start. I'll stop talking. We'll just start start on like super hard. Yeah, I'll, I'll Lose, stop talking. You're Somebody pretty good at scaling. Camp and shock like just stabs you. <laughs> what is you're pretty no, good at scaling really? to the party though. Yeah. Right, so my my usual <clears throat> setting for difficulty is more like uh, enemies behave how they should, like depending on their intelligence. Yeah. Like beasts will act the way a beast will act. Whereas, like, a 20th level Lich will be much more, uh, you know... Um, uh, tactical, going tactical. for spellcasters first. and Exactly. Uh, whereas, like, harder might be, like, suddenly the wolves are, are like, using different tactics on you. And you're like, what the hell? Oh. So we'll, we'll, we'll stick with medium. That's fine. Um, was someone else saying something? I heard someone ask something. Think All right. Or, yeah, me mumbling. Oh, okay. Uh, any, I think I've always got this. <laughs> any like uh, off limit topics that you don't want appearing in the story, like uh, triggering things or anything like that, or is like pretty much anything fair game? Uh, you can also okay. tell me in private, but uh, if you have anything you could think of that like you don't want me to have come up in the story, um, yeah, just let me know. I'm okay with. I, everything I, personally okay. okay i don't know if, if if you guys like i think it's like everything well i don't like somebody has something. something yeah i don't i think a triggering thing for me it would kind of it would really yeah i guess just ruin it the day at least for a little bit um probably would be a sexual assault against children or something like that i would just prefer okay. yeah not to hear you don't about have it. to worry about that it's Okay. That's not no, going to no. be a fun experience for me to no, role play. We should still yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's good to bring it up, yeah. Um, well, just in case it, like, yeah, in the story, like, oh, this kid was. Yeah, you know, it, it. I don't know. It hasn't come up. Uh, there's definitely, like, times, like, where there's violence against, like, villagers and, uh, um, yeah. like, you know, innocence and stuff like that, but nothing. Okay. It's like, yeah, I try to keep it tasteful. and I don't uh, think I've ever okay. seen you do anything about, like, a sexual assault. There's been no, unwarranted um, violence, okay. but There's no, been like, some, sexual like, assault. Or any sort. Most, of the, most of the sexual stuff is, like, other players, like, being, yeah. being silly. Okay, and okay. On each other and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep that in mind, though. Just, uh, I'll make a note of that. All right. So I thought I changed everything about mine, but I still seem to just be a green tile pattern on the. Okay, so if you go down to your chat, on the on the far yeah. left tab, the chat tab at the very bottom of the screen, it says "as" and there's a drop down menu. Click the second instance of your name. It should be towards the bottom or in the in the middle towards the bottom. It's not going to be the top one. Yeah, and also uh, along that vein, if anyone is ever feeling like uncomfortable or like upset about something, make sure you like you can message me privately, but just like let me know uh, like what's going on. Uh, so let's Sweet. see. Players. I'm also like I've taken this approach with like other groups too, and I want to make sure you guys are okay with it. If there's like any problem with the way like a character's behaving or doing something. 
I'd be much, I'm open to the idea of us just being open and talking about it and being like, yeah. hey, when you do this action, we don't know. It makes it feel like you're not allied with the party or, you know, whatever there might be reasoning and just have us talk it out so that way there's no like festering people getting upset, you know, yeah. nothing that's being like drowned because at the end of the day, it is still like a paid service. We're all here to have fun. And I don't want, like, anything I do or anything somebody else does to, like, infringe upon that. Because we've had, like, small things in the past in other games. And just being open and honest and talking about it so that we can understand where you're coming from, what you're meaning to do, what your character is, rather than feeling like um, there's going to be, like, a problem, you know, like having people be upset as weeks go by. solve problems quickly. Yeah. Just being open and talking about it, yeah. Because I know Matt's played in some games specifically, too, where things have gone kind of south. Um, so I just want to make sure, like, we're all cohesive and here to have fun. Yeah. Agreed. Heck yeah. Yeah, I don't want to hinder your guys' fun at all. So that's... All right. Yep. Uh, so I'm just... <laughs> know uh... that if anything is brought up, it's not like a personal attack against you or, like, anything else. Well, or I don't want anybody thinking that usually, either. Usually, uh... I mean, usually, unless it's really serious, we'll we'll do that stuff kind of outside of uh, game now, time. Um, yeah, also, yeah, but... I would say, you know, this is a fantasy setting, and, you know, we're all here to have fun, blah, blah, blah. But uh, also, I like what Lou brings to his games is a sort of realism about the world he creates. Awesome. So, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Scary. Uh, and what I mean by that is you... Obviously, you do what you would do as your character, right? If you're playing a silly character, you do silly things. But within reason, right? Mm -hmm. um, you see what I mean? Get killed yeah. if you're not careful. Like, if you're yeah. going off and murdering people and, like, the rest of us aren't okay with it... Yeah, that's right. there's going to be repercussions oh, yeah. so, for that. And one thing I should mention, yeah, like choices definitely have um, consequences in the game. Like, if someone is murdering like a townsperson, like you guys will probably lose access to the town, which could now, upset I mean, the other players. Yeah, you could so do that, like that, right? Like yeah, you could do that, really... but but talk to the party. For sure. Make game. sure you're all okay with uh, one yeah. murder yeah. before you uh, start. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's not just. I will say that there's also come up everybody. times, this is good to note, there's also come up times where, like, people are fighting and we want to, like, save the person, but the person's not, you know, like, fighting back. Rather than just, like, aggressively attacking them, you can use your reaction to say, hey, I'm going to wait, and if this person attacks, then I'm going to attack it again. If, like, everybody's calling for a peace treaty and you might not want it because this person's just wailing on you or something like a bandit, that might be... That was a pretty good compromise for things that we came across as well in previous games. We've ironed out all our issues. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go. Yeah. Uh, I'm oh. just finishing up Jimmy the Spring here. Um, yes, oh, Jimmy so the Spring. for the display, could you change it to the to Jimmy and give me your passive uh, perception and insight, like kind of how everyone else has it set up, just so I know what they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, one sec. Yeah, Lou, how do I... What, what's the stats? How does 10 go? plus your perception, and then 10 plus your insight. Uh, Warforged okay. don't have dark vision. No, they don't. Okay. So what is what is perception based off of? Is it wisdom? Wisdom. Or is it dumb? Yeah. Oh. Wisdom. Okay. The first one's going to be your wisdom. The second one's going to be your intelligence modifier. Plus, if you have proficiency in it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do a quick token check to make sure everything is saved. So, yeah, I must uh, not be understanding exactly. So, so oh, first one flip your character sheet. What's your perception modifier? Uh, wisdom modifier. Yeah, Let's wisdom start with modifier? wisdom first. Is just yes. your, yes. Your, yes. Your, the wisdom, your perception. What's oh, your perception? So basically, Actually, yeah, in the okay. next roll. Perception roll. is one. Your okay, so your passive basically is as if you roll a ten on a d twenty. So whatever that would be, that's your passive. All right, plus plus the one. So, so you're eleven. 11. And 11. then what's your insight? Uh, insight is. Oh, insight's also wisdom. Yeah, they're it's both wisdom. Three. So usually they're the same unless you have training in one and not the other. 
Yeah, I have. Yeah, so I have. Uh, it's three, so that's thirteen. So eleven slash thirteen. Yeah. Exactly. Got so it. I did not really follow that. Could we get that one more time? Yeah. Open sure. up your character sheet. I got it. And what's your perception? Well, that's the question, isn't it? That what is. What are the numbers next to it? On the left side of the sheet, yeah, next to your stats, you'll see that there's the list of all of your. Oh, I see. Yeah, three skills. Your perception is three. three. Yeah. Okay. And what's your insight? Uh, also three. I have proficiency. Okay, so you're thirteen okay. slash thirteen because it's ten plus whatever that is because ten's going to be like okay. a if it was a base roll. So you have a passive perception of thirteen. And a passive uh, inside of 13. I changed my name nice. to Jimmy1313. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically. This okay. is just so, like, when you're walking down a dungeon hallway, I don't have to be like, okay, what's everyone's is passive that, perception? I could just yeah. Look is that it. on the character name on the sheet, or is that. Yeah, that's on your else. character name. So when you do personalization and display in the settings, you have your display name. Yeah. And you would have just your name and then the numbers. Okay, all right. of the lighting. Yeah, like Matt was saying, it's also in the settings, not the character sheet. Right. Sorry if I confused that, yeah. No, I got you. I got you. Can everyone see the tree? Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty tree. That's a pretty tree. Look, I'm looking at it from the top. Uh, what about now? Uh, just my character token. Uh, Some of you should be. I don't see, see it, and I also have a vision. graphics performance uh, notification. Uh oh. Um, Which, what what uh what browser are you using? I'm using uh, uh Chrome. Do you have uh um the uh what is it called? Like uh, I want to say it's like Turbo something. So if you go to your Chrome settings, yeah. uh. There's a possibility this may be an issue because this is a school issued computer I'm using. Uh, well, there is a setting in Chrome. I think it's under system. Wait. Yeah, use hardware acceleration when available. Uh, is that turned okay. on? Let's see. Under like system under your Chrome settings. Settings. It's, I use Chrome and it's been fine for me. Well, that is good for you. I also use Chrome, and it has been fine for me. See, so yeah, one of the settings good. says system. I'm looking up. Like towards the bottom. <laughs> so I'm in the Chrome settings. I got you, uh, you performance, appearance, search engine, languages, downloads, accessibility, extensions. Uh, uh, what is it under? There's no system option Form? for you? I don't for see system, no. Weird. Um, Maybe it's, I want performance. I wonder if it's an older version or something. Uh, performance. It's under there. All right. Well, there, there's a way you can turn on uh, hardware acceleration, um, which usually. All right. I'll work. I'll look for that. If you for type me. in, if you go into settings and you type in hardware, it'll automatically yeah, pop yeah. up under the system, and you can click that on. Oh, okay. Does that? Does it show for you then? Uh, no, I get no search results found. Oh, really? When I type in hardware, I have continue running background apps in Google's Chrome and use hardware but, acceleration when available. That's fine. We, that's what you want. We can, uh, we can look into that later. But who can see the tree right yeah. now? Yeah. Not to me. I can't. No, I can't. All, the, can't all yeah. the people with dark vision should be able to see it. Yes. Cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nick can see it. Okay. Yeah, so Nick if you can't see it and you have dark vision, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, Whoa, that's and sweet. And <laughs> now, just to check, bring in a campfire. Now you should all be able to see it again. I see. Okay. That is nice. All right. Uh, so, uh, why don't we talk about our stories a little? 
Um, I've talked about it with some of you already, but we can just kind of go around and do like a quick uh, introduction of uh, some of the characters. Uh, I know some of you wanted to do like connected backgrounds. Like I think Beans, you said you wanted to know uh, about Nick. Um, and yeah. uh, anyone else involved in that? I think Mikey. Mikey, which is Juan, right? Yeah. Okay, so you three kind of know each other. Well, why don't we start with Beans? Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about Beans? Uh, so Beans is a six-year-old gnome. He was uh, created as a clone in a mad scientist lab where he escaped from. And uh, and this was, was in another up... world, right? Yeah, yeah. So he somehow um, uh, found a... He found his to way die. to Gaia, yeah. And uh, was picked up by an orphanage that's run by the Church of Paylor. And from there, um, the nun there recognized his... He's incredibly intelligent and also develops rapidly. So for every, like, one year he ages, he actually ages, like, 20 or 30 years. Um oh. Moved on to university, and uh, so does he physically well, age that much, or just mentally? Um, both. Okay, both. Got it. But he's still a kid. Like it's a kind of whacked off system. So he still looks like a six-year-old, but behaves or has like mental capabilities of like a fifty-year-old oh, gnome. So it is more uh, mentally than physically. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So he kind of got raised yeah. uh, in the Phoenix Guild, uh, the wizard, yeah. the wizard um, college of the Empire, and uh, yeah. graduated. Was, yeah, and uh, he was sent to investigate this region of Gaia because something goofy's going on. Sent by the Phoenix Guild his professor oh so AKA. kind of as a, a private thing um yeah yeah all right and uh we don't have to go over the details of, of that unless you want to but uh, no you said you know nick who wanted to be yeah. a part of uh also part of the school but he's more of yeah. like a con artist than an actual wizard mm. um apparently so, yes uh, go ahead, Nick. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Nick? Yeah, so I'm saying Nick and uh, the part of the world, I guess. I have a family and, you know, we needed to get by, so I saw a job posting. And, uh, for, uh, for a professorship, right? Knowledge of the magical, all things magical. So I came in and, you know, maybe persuaded them a little bit maybe de deceived them into believing that maybe I know anything about magic um, which I was able to do and landed myself a nice little sweet little gig well paying job um, we went on a trip to study some magical happenings in a cave and I happened to come across my um, cursed blade um, which got my family killed, and I decided, and, and I decided to not come back to the university. They assumed that I died in this uh, murder, I guess, that happened in my home that happened to kill my whole family. To, uh, they were looking for this blade that I had found. So Some, it wasn't the blade; it was uh, yeah. whoever was looking for it, someone who you yes. don't know who it is. Okay. Exactly. So then, uh, yeah, I end up meeting Beans again on the road, but I had uh, met him, I guess. I bumped so into him a few times. Was Beans, like, in your class, or was he just someone you knew from the uh, academy? I guess just from the academy, yeah. All right. Uh, cool. So that uh, that's kind of why you're traveling with him. Not as much to uh, look into whatever Beans is looking into, but more to... It reminds of... me of my kids, so I wanted to tag along with him. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, what about Tirso? Um, 
grew up in a cave and a nice comfortable cavern like any typical dwarf and then uh, found out that the family found out that had he'd been hearing voices or whatnot so they sent him off to a monastery or excuse me to a hermitage to learn how to gain better control of it and so over you, the years he learned when you say you what? grew up in a cave do you mean like in a dwarven city or an dwarven, actual cave? dwarven cavern yes okay. good cave um <laughs> not a not like a random cave somewhere all right a good cave if, so, this one smells nicer doesn't smell no. bad okay <clears throat> Um, loving family and all that, but went to the, uh, the hermitage, which was in an, uh, a valley, uh, and started learning how to interact and control the, uh, voices and figure he come to the conclusion that they were ancestors, our ancestors talking to us. So he learned how through a, a one of the other men, people that mentored him, he learned how to control those, um, uh, apply those ancestors voices into making miracles and then years later uh some uh raiders came by and did some very very bad things to individuals out there so uh tears took uh their kind of response and uh killed three of the raiders and then realized he just couldn't stay there anymore after he calmed down so he's started walking and Walking the world. So he's just sort of been traveling? Yes. Uh, now, is he, uh, would he be from the, uh, make sure I get the name right, uh, would he be from the Drogoth Empire, the Dwarven Empire in the mountains, or do you see him as more of like a part of the Teruvian Empire, like where the group is now? I left it open because I didn't know where everybody else was, so... Um, I could be Teruvian. I just want to make it so there was whole, enough holes in my uh, backstory that you can drive a party through. All right. Well, either one would work fine. Either you traveled a bunch to come south or you actually are from this area. Either one of those would be fine. Um, Let's go Teruvian then. I'll come south. Okay, so you've traveled quite a ways south. Uh, maybe kind of finding a new life uh, as well while you're... Uh, Trying to escape the nightmares of actually having to kill people um, mm -hmm. while not really wanting to. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, all right. Uh, so what about Dewdrop? Tell us about yourself. Uh, let's see here. Oh, boy. Um, Dewdrop <laughs> is a... Here, one sec. Me. That's right. Can y'all hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my um, uh, let me know if I cut out because I don't have the best of internet. So you're good. Uh, Dewdrop Toadleaf is a divine soul sorcerer in service of Orisel, the Great Gardener. Um, he uh, let's see. I guess it'd be easier just to give you the whole thing. Um, Orisel, is an archfey with a love of gardening, seeing it as a balance between civilization and the wilds. Uh, however, in his quest to build the greatest garden, he would cause his own downfall. Uh, procuring plants and animals from across the plains, he accidentally brought lichens to the Feywilds from Fawnel in the Beastlands. That led to humans of Brokestone Vale's curse. Um, the Vale's humans and Fey fought in a terrible war, which eventually led back to RSL's garden. Uh, he offered a lone, a Ladron woman, protection in his garden, and one day, however, who revealed herself to be the queen of air and darkness, uh, destroying his garden. Now his garden lays in the Shadowfell, uh, Arcel killing any who enter. Uh, Dewdrop Toadleaf was the current keeper of the shrine of Arcel that was located 100 foot from the area that was uh, once the great uh, garden. Uh, this area is now known as Arcel's Crater since the great fey wars that ruined the land. The followers of Aracel brought the land back to peace and prosperity in worship of their great arch fey, hoping Aracel would return to them. Uh, this was not the case, however, but as the leader of the faithful, Dewdrop Toadleaf was bestowed great powers by Aracel for his efforts in healing the land around the crater. Uh, a festival uh, was planned in celebration of Arcel's gift being bestowed on Toadleaf for his hard work leading the faithful in the restoration of the lands around the crater. 
Uh, the faithful Fae of RSO would not get to celebrate their accomplishments long, however, as the once thought defeated werewolves of Broken Stone Vale would feel RSL's magic once again as he bestowed some of his powers to Dewdrop. Um, the werewolves gathered a large force and pushed far into the forest of RSL. Uh, the Fae forces could not withstand the blitz of the werewolves as they moved fast, tearing through the forests in search of the Fae magic. The Broken Stone Veil werewolves left none alive in their path as they moved in on the Shrine of Arcel. Dewdrop uh, and his fellow Fae managed to hold them back for several hours, killing many werewolves near the Shrine. Uh, even though the followers of Arcel were mighty, they stood little chance of fending off the Horde as the Fae fell one by one. The only Dewdrop Toad Leaf was left. Uh, Toad Leaf would, uh, a, a Toad Leaf would have rather seen the forest obliterated than to let it fall into the hands of the enemies that destroyed it the first time. So Toad Leaf gathered up all his energy and used the relic bestowed to him by the previous elders of the followers of Aracel, the ancient scroll of Meteor Storm, left uh, to him in dark times. Uh, Toad Leaf knew that this meant his death as well and accepted his fate after putting all his magic into uh, into it, channeling the scroll. The meteor started to rain down as Toad Leaf was about to hit the ground. He was portaled into some strange, unknown world. It was a dreary world compared to his old home, and he was in rough shape. He fluttered to a cave to rest and pray for a while while the rain poured down outside for three days. He rested before journeying out to find food and to survey his new environment. Toad Leaf doesn't know why he was spared that day, but he hopes to find out why. Since landing in this new realm, Toad Leaf has not heard the voice of his Archfey, and Toad Leaf's power has not come back either. It seems he must make the best of it in this brand new land. So that kind of explains why you're why you're only level one. You used to be powerful, but yeah. you got drained. Uh, yeah. Also, it looks like you need items. I don't see any items in their sheet. Yeah, I'm still building. Still building. Gotcha. All right. Uh, what about Juan? Tell me about yourself. All right. Uh, Juan grew up traveling around the Truvian Empire. Um, not really quite fitting in. Learned how to blend in with the locals. Um, and ended up being an extremely useful skill that during investigations, the Crimson Blade, which is part of the investigation units of the Phoenix Guild, correct, Lou? Yes. And uh, the, the, Crimson... the uh, military arm of the Phoenix Guild, the ones who regulate magic throughout the Empire. Uh, while on one of the excursions, uh, Juan was found, um, and they thought that his unique abilities would be very good, especially as a spy, and in gathering information for them. Um, being trained a little bit um, through the... Crimson Blade, uh, he now is sent out on missions um, to help gather information on suspicious activities. Um, while Beans has, you know, gone through the school, there is some mystery surrounding it, and they also wanted to send one out to Char. They don't have much influence out there. They thought it would be a good idea to gather some information and also to keep an eye on Beans. Um, while being part of the Phoenix Guild, um, I do have a little bit of familiarity with some of the people. Um, I had come across Nick and Beans a few mm -hmm. times, um, but it was never any serious relationships formed. Um, and as of yet, they do not currently know that I am following and investigating uh, through the city of Char. So you've sort of followed them since you're going that way anyway. But you're hiding your reason. You're more just telling them you're kind of... Uh, uh, did you tell them anything about why you're going there? Or are you just kind of... I have I have not. No, uh, they know nothing. Um, and I also uh, appear to everyone as just an old dwarf. Um, nobody really knows. All right, well, they both have a nine insight, so that would make sense. We're like, meh, all right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just the old door. Yeah, that was the old man. But even I'm I'm assuming Lou, even if they did have good insight, uh somebody may not know quite what I am. 
Uh, oh, well, yeah, your actual uh, race, they probably wouldn't know. I was more just saying, like, why is it, why is this, oh. why is this guy following us up here? And just kind of yeah, like, yeah. shrug it off. He's our friend. He's our buddy. He's just yeah. hanging out. Uh, all right. Thank you for that. Um, Jimmy, what about you? Tell me about Jimmy. <laughs> okay, so this is going to, I've got a concept here. So, <laughs> Jamerson Mark II, a.k.a. Jimmy the Spring, is essentially a fighting uh, construct from, like, if you think of a training arena from an RPG game or something like that, where you go and you just battle against the same dudes and try to beat them and get as high as possible and win awards and stuff. Jimmy the Spring would be, like, one of the first guys you would fight. So one, and he was one thing I will say, Warforged are extremely rare in this world, like almost more than any other race, because the art of soul forging has been lost for over a millennia. Uh, any Warforged that exists today are at least like you're looking at a thousand years old. Um, so okay. you could very well have been from a time when that was the, the case back in the 12th cycle. But um, yeah, these days, like you probably get very like odd looks from people who uh, don't know what you are. We can work with that as long as you're yeah. fine with it in the context. But so, the 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 ahead. point this kind of works actually because the idea is being that he was built by either the like the head of that arena or like the armorer of it who was Jamerson Iron Fist who was the original <laughs> and so he's Jimmy Mark II and he was built and so that guy's been dead forever. And yeah. Jamerson Mark II has been traveling the land seeking worthy competition. And also, I was going to say his father's killers, but if that was a thousand years ago, that might not work. But maybe he doesn't fully understand that concept and is still seeking vengeance. <laughs> anyway. Okay. It's possible <laughs> it's that kind of maybe funny. like you were, I don't want to say deactivated, but maybe like something put you into a stasis and for a long time. Uh, you didn't even realize how long you had been sleeping. Um, yeah, I was going to play him as sort of old-timey anyway, so that works well. Yeah, he uh, probably spoke Dwarven, as this part of the world in the 12th cycle was just like completely um, taken by the dwarves, but he probably speaks common as well. Um, That's actually already in his character sheet, so I was imagining Jamerson Iron Fist as a dwarf, so that fits... And, uh, yeah, he's essentially like a training robot for fighters that lost his house of, of his arena that he worked out of and is now wandering the land searching for sort of purpose and inspiration and challenge. All right. Maybe, uh, maybe you woke up in an old ruin, like, gaining consciousness somehow and realized, like, everyone was gone or dead. And, yeah, you realized you were yeah, it could a be a whole new world. It could even be a thing where I, like, don't fully know what happened and I'm trying to find out what happened to people and why I was out for so long. But Yeah, I mean, at this point, unless, like, you wander directly from the ruin into this adventure, you probably realize uh, that quite a bit of time has passed. Um, no, I think he's been out as in his current form as an adventurer in the okay. land, sort of trying to face challengers and kind of like test uh, himself as a combatant for a while now i think he's kind of old as a character and in personality okay. and like experience and maybe if he hasn't been in the if he isn't a known presence in the area then he's at least been there for a period of years all right and that would make sense because yeah if you were originally made as a like a sparring um robot then maybe like your awakening kind of incorporates some of that with you wanting to improve your own fighting ability uh so yeah, yeah, yeah. you've been kind of working as a mercenary since uh you came back all right uh all right i think that's everyone uh tirasil i think you're still showing as a pink splotch so you might need yeah to i was trying to rem I figure out how to do it uh, so in the chat tab at the very bottom, there's like a drop down next to as you just want to change that to the second instance of your name, which is your character. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, it, I didn't see it before when that was being brought up. So thank you. 
Yeah, no worries. Uh, so, actually, one, your backstory reminded me of something kind of important. Uh, in this empire, because of uh, the cataclysm cycles and all the uh, destruction of, uh, of civilizations and such, magic is highly regulated. So, either uh -huh. you have a registry with the Phoenix Guild, or you are a kind of orphaned... Uh, Arcanists, as people call them. Uh, orphan Arcanists are often uh, hunted by Wands organization, uh, the Crimson Blade. So I think a lot of you use magic. Um, I'm guessing Wan, obviously you're registered. Yep. Uh, now, Beans would be registered. Beans would be registered, yeah. What about... I, I'm guessing Nick would be too if he was a professor. Although that was kind of fake, so I don't know, maybe he like forged the document. What do you what do you think, Nick? Like after? Oh yeah, for here. sure. He's lying on his resume, baby. He's going full and on. And am I gonna? I'm gonna discover artist. Nick is alive <laughs> here. But you know uh, that that's, sword gave me some. That's true. <laughs> powers. You probably. I mean, you probably knew that already if you traveled up here with him. Um, maybe like that's not. I mean, you're from the military wing, so you might not care as much about like what goes on in the, you know, in the academic wing. So you might not really care that he uh, disappeared. Um, but Nick, after you got your magic, would you have actually registered or still kind of kept that secret? I would have kept it a secret. Okay, so you don't have you don't have legit papers. I'm assuming Dewdrop, you wouldn't either. What what is registration? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what about Tearsill? Would you ever have looked into doing that, or are you just kind of not caring? So his his opinion is it's not his magic. He's he's he thinks he's basically like a cleric. Okay. So he's he's not casting. He's asking the ancestors to cast. So would that fall into the not care category? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, the Phoenix Guild wouldn't see it that way. But I mean, as yeah. long as you don't uh, like make yourself noticed by any of their uh, people, then you're probably fine. So, I mean, the Dwarven Empire doesn't do that. They don't do any type of magic regulation. So. Which, so that's two things tying it into no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. What are, what's everybody's class? Hmm. I have I, no class. Oh, the character. <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. I got my soundboard. I see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can start with beans, right? Did you tell you say your class? I'm a wizard. Okay. Uh, You're a wizard, Nick? Beanie. Nick, oh, uh, yeah, hexblade warlock. Okay, yeah. tear cell. Uh, divine soul uh, sorcerer. Okay, dewdrop. Divine soul sorcerer. Oh man, uh, <laughs> I am a. I'm gonna be an eloquence bard and Jimmy. Nice. I know you're. Oh mom. yeah, sorry. I forgot. I, I thought you were talking to a real person named Jimmy for a second. I'll get into the character in a second. <laughs> I'm a monk. It's like the. It's like real steel. <laughs> okay, so what we have? We have two sorcerers, a warlock, a wizard, a bard, a bard, and a monk. And a monk. <laughs> oh well. Okay, well, to be fair, I'm also After going to multi. <laughs> I was going to multi-class paladin and bard. So yeah, don't that's, worry. we'll have gonna plenty. Take, it's going to take a while though, <laughs> but yeah, it's good to know I'll for the first robot. five levels. Yeah, <laughs> of a very magical-oriented group, and one yeah. uh, and one mage hunter in the group. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's good thing. I'm not the mage. <laughs> Ugilist. <laughs> Bring we it will, though. We will find out if you are are or not. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Were you uh, were you saying something, Elric? Or wait, uh, I, not Elric. I don't Dude, know John. who that is. No, we're definitely all going to die. We're yeah. going to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, what does mean? Uh, I don't have anything witty to say. <laughs> it's just it. true. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so. Uh, it is, we're going to start our story on the 84th of summer, 1157, during the 13th cycle. Uh, so, you've all come to the city of Highgard, uh, 
uh, hoping to, um, I, well, there's a, there is a, a job that was offered for mercenaries to help uh, a caravan get to the, uh, the frontier town of Char, which is actually paying fairly well and seems like it's going to be a fairly easy job. Uh, so whyever you are all here, I know why some of you are here, like Bean and Nick and uh, Juan. Um, I'm guessing the others may have just wandered in here. Uh, unless any of you had a specific reason for being in High Guard. I guess we should start with the world map. Uh, Tear Sail's wandering in. Just kind of has been wandering There's a job around. to do? Uh, yeah, you're a... Uh, oh, uh, good, I can see that. Thank God. So. Uh, quick question: Could you go over the uh, 84th summer again? Oh, the Since date. I'm note. Yeah, the date is. Uh, oh, and that's a good point. We have to. It's on the it. calendar. I will start it. taking notes. I yeah, couldn't so remember where the calendar was. We have to you... set up our scribe and our quartermaster. Thank you for oh, reminding true. me. Completely forgot. Here, uh, so volunteered for scribe. Oh, did you? Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to take. Okay. I don't want to take inventory. I'll take notes. I'll so do. Just a quick, uh, quick thing about those jobs. Uh, scribe, basically, you take notes on the session, uh, post them in the journal section at the end or before next game as soon as you can, just so if anyone missed, they can see what they missed. Uh, but you get a story point for doing that, and story points can be spent to get cool stuff, uh, like uh, mm. backstory elements in the game and... Uh, not, not items or anything directly in the game, but just like uh, kind of uh, stuff that um, kind of uh, improves your or gets you more attached to your character story attached to the game. Uh, sure. So you We're get for loot boxes, but uh, yeah. Lou hasn't. I don't have my five ninety nine loot box sale. To yeah. 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 <laughs> There's, still, still uh, the, I guess it. the cheapest one is you can use a story point to reroll if you think it's a critical moment. Um, but yeah, then it scales up. He has them pinned in his yeah, notes. If you guys wanted to look and see what they were, if you look in the um, under the uh, custom rules, it talks about how you can use story points. Uh, but the... As for the journal, um, whoever did it, normally we start every week with the person reading the journal from their previous week to try to basically catch us up and re remind us all where we're at. Yeah. Last so, time on. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, you can make it really intricate. You could do something more simple. It's kind of up to you how you want to do it. Um, but uh, as for the quartermaster... Uh, that's more of like uh, keeping track of that sheet I linked and making sure like if people are putting stuff in the party treasury uh, that it's, you know, being recorded uh, and just like recording any side quests the group gets and stuff like that. It's basically there's not usually much to do, but sometimes I'll you have a couple. start of it start if you're it. OK, if you guys are OK with that. And you get a story point every four sessions for doing that. Instead of yeah, session. Mikey, you're doing that. Yeah, I'll I'll do it for the first month. Okay. Thank you. So that is uh one. Got it. Thank you. Uh so yes, we're starting our story on the uh 84th of summer at uh uh 84th of summer, 1157, 13th cycle. Uh, it's a warm evening as the sun is kind of set over high guard. Uh, there's a bunch of guards gathered in the town square as the caravan is getting ready to leave for char tomorrow. Um, merchants and guards move about, loading crates onto various wagons. Uh, and you six have uh, been talking a little, but not too much. Um, you're kind of sitting around a fire in the square right now when a gentleman who is somewhat armored approaches you, uh, smiles and says, uh, you must be the mercenaries I have to work with. Uh, my name is Shock. I'm with the Caravan Company. I was hoping to speak to you all a bit before we go. Uh, do you all have a moment to talk? Yes. I, I don't know. I just came up to these adventurers looking for food. He says food. Well, there's plenty I've, of food in the marketplace, but I assume you're I here. I pull out a ration to share with Dewdrop. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and I said, well, how you doing there, friend? Good to meet you. 
says, yes, it's uh, good to meet all of you. Um, why don't uh, why don't I go around and uh, get some more info from you? He says, uh, kind of looks over at Beans. He says, you're uh, kind of a small one, aren't you? Are you sure you're in the right place? I think so. I'm just following my friends here. They, they, they've uh, led me here. But, Don't worry, uh, yeah. old man. We got him under our wing. We'll make sure he's t- well taken care of. He's a little spry little one. You'll be surprised. He says, we, we are going into some possibly dangerous territories. Are you sure we should be bringing this child? Uh, what exactly can he do? That uh, He's under my protection. He'll be all right. Says, uh, oh, very well. Uh, so, Bean... He's also um, got some magics, I think, you know. Why don't you give us a quick description of Beans, Matt? I know we did the story, but tell us yeah. what he looks like. Uh, Beans is a two foot six tall gnome who weighs about 35 pounds. Um, he's wearing baggy uh, clothes, almost looks like he's somewhat homeless. Um, it would be like a brown hoodie or gray hoodie um, today. Uh, but yeah. White hair, um, blue eyes. He's not carrying any weapons or anything. He does have a little amulet thing around his neck and has a little backpack. So nature, DC 12. Uh, anyone can roll this. You might know something here. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of you already know this, um, but if you beat a 12 which do drop uh, i guess so you would know that beans is definitely a child uh you kind of know a little bit about gnomes and it's very odd to you that uh someone this young would be in a place like this uh so Dewdrop would kind of flutter down to, to beans and say it is very dangerous for a small child like you to be traveling by by yourself or with these people these it is this place is new to me but it is it's it's very dangerous from what i've seen yes that's oh that's uh that's what i was saying now beans um i assume you have some sort of uh uh combat ability that uh, you want this job i mean i assume they wouldn't have taken uh taken you in unless you had some kind of uh means I to mean, fight i already graduated from the university in Taiwanis. Oh? Um, the capital? Yes. This is a, yeah, so you're, the, the, you're Nick here is uh, he helped train me and has been asked to uh, watch over me. I'm not too worried about myself. He says, well, what sort of uh, ways can you uh, defend What can yourself? I say? I taught him everything I know. Hmm. Um, I I would pull out my books and show uh, these books have a lot of knowledge on protecting myself and my friends. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's tons of knowledge. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Hmm. Um, and I'll cast a minor illusion and or well, I guess mage hand and. Alright, so this is your first time hand. spell casting. What would your spell casting look like? Um, beans would open his book, flip to a page, and start reading and chanting off of that page as well as doing some motions. Uh, the arcane energy would be popping off of the page and and form a mage hand to shake Shock's hand with. He says, ah, a wizard, as he shakes the hand and smiles. He says, I've uh, fought with your kind before, though. Well, I'll be honest, I don't see too many arcanists out west. Um, it'll be good to have you. I could use yeah. uh, I could use some magical energies to help protect our people. Uh, and I uh, do love candy and chocolates, but I'm told I'm only allowed to eat one piece a day. Ah, well, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, what about you, friend? He looks over to uh, Nick. He says, what sort of abilities do you bring to the battlefield? Well, I was a professor... Um, so, I taught everything that Beans knows. Oh. Um, 
obviously. Come on. But uh, I also got this sword here that uh, does some uh, nice cutting. So what does the sword look like? Because I don't think you've described it yet. Did you describe what Nick looks like as well? Oh, true. Yeah. What would Nick look like? I guess just tall, normal build, uh, orc. And uh, I guess just got his... Yeah, armor on his scale mail, and he just happens to be carrying a, a sword that is mostly black, but I guess has these glowing green lines, Runes? artistic lines in it, geometric shapes, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, seeing this sword now, clearly... Uh, Someone might know something about it uh, with an Arcana check, DC 20. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, no. So, <laughs> Tiris, um, you see this... Oh, my God! Oh, oh that Everyone totally. knows about your sword. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, well, Shit. I guess Shit. Wong's yeah. been traveling with you a while, but... Uh, Tiris, um, the sword looks like it is made of some sort of strange material. I mean, most swords are forged with uh, steel or iron, but the darkness on this one uh, looks like uh, an ancient material that uh, you know is called blackstone, which is supposed to be extremely rare and also supposed to be indestructible. Uh, it's like obsidian, but much harder and uh, much more durable. And much more difficult to forge. Oh yeah, like you, you've probably never seen Blackstone before in your life. Like this would be the first time you've seen it. It's extremely rare. Like the the uh, awesome. methods for creating it were lost long ago. Um, so yeah, you're like, oh, like you just. Uh, I don't know if you want to say anything, but yeah, it's definitely interesting to you. Uh, all right. So Shock just nods and says it's an impressive blade. Uh, I assume you're a frontline fighter, then. Someone who will be beside me if we get attacked. Oh, yeah, sure, man. I got you. No worries. Just, a deception yeah, check. You know. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> he nods and says, uh, And what about you? Uh, uh, he looks over to Tirasil. What's your name, and uh, what do you bring to a battle? Tirasil. And when you're looking at Tirasil... He he's relatively tall for a dwarf, and dressed in brown robes and a red arming cap on his head. He uses the battle axe as his walking stick staff, and when he walks, he's like steady determination of yes, this is the direction, no confusion, no nothing. Once you come closer, you see his fork beard, and it's actually uh, plated, and his eyes are black and ever shifting. And since he's balding, he's using that arming cap to reduce the uh, uh, possibility of sunburn. But yes, he has many years of being under the sun wrinkling his face and uh, um, I bring myself and whatever the ancestors ask of me. This is ancestors? Is that like some sort of magic? I am but their vessel. As well, do you find yourself more on the front lines fighting or supporting from the back? I prefer to support, but I will follow the word of the ancestors and go to the front when necessary. As well, I believe I'll be interesting to see what you are interested to see what you bring to the battlefield, my friend. Um, it's uh, it's not often I see two half orcs in the same place, uh, especially within a city. Um, well, anyway, uh, what about you, uh, little one? Looks over to Dewdrop. I assume you're some sort of magic user. Uh, so Dewdrop, I'll go ahead and give uh, what he looks like. Yeah, He's two right. foot tall. Uh, he looks like kind of like an, an elven child with longer ears kind of sticking out more. Um, very noticeably light um, purple skin. Um, green hair green uh green like long hair with uh, green eyes 
he um, he has adornments on his his uh, wings. He has like these golden adornments on on his wings, and then golden pa uh, pauldrons and uh, really nice, exquisite robes, uh, green robes, and uh, golden gauntlets, and just really adorned, really nicely. Um, and then he uh, he says, uh, as far as fighting capability goes, I. I don't really like to fight, but if I have to, I, I like to stay back where okay. I can just blast them. So as a user of magic, then, uh, it'll be... Uh... I, used, I used to be very powerful. My name is Toad Leaf, but now I don't know. And then, like, he tries to do, like, uh, like a very powerful, uh, like, magical ability or something, and it doesn't work. Mm. So, nope. well... Do you have any abilities that do still work? I have quite a few. Look at this. And then he goes, he reaches down towards uh, towards the ground, and uh, there's a flower. He makes it He makes it bloom. He said, look at this flower. Oh, I was more thinking uh, combat, really. But, uh, that is very interesting. Um, well, uh, it's good to have you with us. I assume you're uh, maybe some kind of druid then? I, I, uh, so I don't know how I would kind of describe uh, uh, because he wouldn't have really labeled himself I guess out there he was just very powerful and that's why he became like the um, the head of the, the follow followers of RSL was he was the most powerful um, what would I describe him as uh, like, I mean I... generally speaking like you would use your class name okay um, I, I would say I would say if I, you want to say yeah. you're from a place where they didn't do that you can of course like do that that way um because people know well some people know like what druids and sorcerers and wizards are yeah I'm sure they would know what that is in the Feywild right uh, most likely yeah yeah okay so I, I would say um yes I used to be a very powerful sorcerer Hmm. So it's interesting. Uh, now, would you have any like uh, markings on you that might identify your troop or anything like that? Uh, yeah. So on on the um, uh, he has a, a piece of jewelry kind of around where his um his chest is on the on the center portion. There would be uh kind of the um, uh, insignia of of Aracel, uh the Archfey. All right. Uh, I guess uh, another Arcana check might let someone recognize the symbol. Uh, I'll say DC fifteen. <laughs> All right. Uh, so beans. <laughs> Damn. He joins the beans. Game. Beans uh, is hella smart, man. Yeah, yep. so uh, you definitely <laughs> recognize uh, Dewdrop symbol, those who made the roll. Uh, at first, you might think he's kind of BSing, but the symbol he wears does at least partially back up his story. Um, whether or not he was as powerful as he says he is, it's hard to say, but he definitely bears the symbol of the person he uh, claims to serve. Uh, and then he says to Shot, I think Oh, that's acrobatic. I may be able to actually still cure people of their minor wounds and bruises and cuts. Maybe. Oh. I'm not really oh. sure. I haven't really tried any magic since I've been the bad. This is well. Healing magics are always welcomed. Uh, saving lives in the battlefield is uh, immensely important. I'll keep that in mind, little one. Thank you. Uh, what about you, old man? Uh, what are you doing here? Yeah. You know, I came here to bring the music as he pulls out a lyre and he just starts playing like. He says, ah, Battle Bard, can you inspire the troops with your magic? Or do you ah, just play obviously. nice tunes? You think, you think an old man doesn't know how to inspire his troops? <laughs> Shock him. I'm shocked. He says, I, I didn't say I didn't think you did. I was just, I was just asking. Uh, what would one ah. look like? You see, uh, he's like a five-year-old 
uh, short dwarf. I guess kind of tall for a dwarf, five actually, year old? but five feet tall. Oh, Did five. I say five year old? <laughs> you <laughs> didn't say five year old. He's <laughs> five years old, he man. Big beard for being five. He's definitely, he's actually definitely like a little kid with a beard like strapped <laughs> yeah. to his face. Just, it's <laughs> actually three kids in a trench coat <laughs> yeah. with a fake beard. <laughs> we have four kids on this mission. Yeah, it's the opposite uh, of Bean's effect. He ages. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> physically. You see, it's a real old man. Big, long, flowing beard. The white hair, you know, combed back into a braid. Um, he's wearing an eye patch, so it looks like you know he may have seen some combat back in his day. But even so, he just maintains like a jolly demeanor as he's sitting there, kind of playing the music and trying to entertain the people. So you are mm. playing a song right now. Yeah. Uh, like, what kind of uh, feelings are you trying to... Uh, like, what kind of song is it? This is going to be, like, an inspirational, like, we're getting excited, ready for the next kind of day, as, you know, we're about to go on this embarkment. All right. Uh, so go ahead. What, what were you saying? Oh, uh, yeah, it looked like just like an old... Yeah, just, uh, and you notice his clothes are pretty fancy, but it makes sense if he's trying to always put on, like, a show for people, um, you know. All right, mm. uh, so, and I assume you don't have any markings, uh, telling what, what group you might serve. Oh, I have no distinct markings whatsoever, um, and I have no, yeah, there's, like, nothing identifying on me, I'm just, like, look as basic of as basic of a bard can be. You're just uh, like, oh yeah. You look at that dude and like, yeah, that's obviously a bard. <laughs> now, most uh, members of the Crimson Blade carry a special, like, uh, you, it can be any type of blade. Um, I'm guessing you're still fairly new to the organization, so you might not have one yet. I do carry a dagger on me as my sidearm. Okay. Oh, me too. But I don't think it's so... it would be one of the enchanted ones. Also, did did we just crash? I'm oh, still no. working. I, I hear music. We're in a new map. Oh, I, I just don't hear He changed music. the map a while ago. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, I still got this jamming music. So, uh, Shock would kind of nod at that and say, well, um, I've, I've definitely fought alongside bards before, so I know a bit about them. I look forward to see what type of things uh, you can do on the battlefield. He says, I no. put on a slight performance for him real quick while we're playing. Oh, look at that. All right. So wow. uh, you were playing a lovely tune. That's why I was trying to change the music to uh, do a lovely tune. But for some reason, my stuff is not working. All right. Well, we're back to, yeah. Um, so he just claps a bit as uh, you play this inspirational song. Uh, this is... Uh, it's quite good, and a couple of the, the guards there are now clapping as well, as they're uh, enthralled by your music. He says, Now, for the life of me, I've never seen anything like you, sir, as he peers over at Jimmy. Uh, he says, Is that some kind of full-body armor you're wearing? Okay, so real quick before I drop into the zone here, when we're doing <laughs> checks, do I roll a d20? So if you click on your sheet on the on the appropriate skill, it should roll it for you. Okay, so do I just keep my character sheet open while we're playing, more or less? Uh, you can double click I'm... the top of it to minimize it, but you definitely want to have it like within somewhere you can quickly grab it. But you did. Okay, I didn't I've know you could minimize it. Yeah, she would have fucking click. known that in all my if other you games. Look at the top left <laughs> and type <laughs> your two <laughs> monitors. <laughs> On the top left, you can actually pop it up and take it to the other monitor, so you can have your character on, on one monitor and your game on two. Oh, okay, yeah, that, okay, that's, that's what great. I do. Got it. All right, sweet. Alt -tabs Good to know. Okay. Rock. Thank you for those tips. Yeah, I, so, I dropping usually, into character here. Yeah, I don't usually like to turn your sheet because there's an option to turn it into a window, but a bunch of the functionality doesn't work as a window. So yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, go yeah. ahead, Jimmy. What were you saying? All right. Oh, he says. What? You ain't never heard of Jimmy the Spring? <laughs> and uh, Jimmy the Spring... Jimmy the Spring, contrary to the image on the tab, is rather old and dilapidated looking and uh, is wearing some sort of fantasy version of slacks and an undershirt uh, and sort of sitting on a, a 
crate or something to the effect. And he says, Why, Jimmy the Spring been fighting suckers your size since before you been eating eggs, boy. (laughs) But I guess what I'm asking you, sir, is what are you? Jimmy the Spring's a professional pugilist. A pro puncher, sir. A master at the martial arts. Jimmy is not addressing the fact that he is made entirely of metal and is instead <laughs> focused on his career aspect. So, so Paul, you have you have this thing where it's kind of cutting out, sounding robotic. It's actually oh, perfect. Adding, it's actually adding. <laughs> it's actually awesome. adding. Ideal. Yeah. Yeah, I planned that. I'm sad I don't have bad internet connection now. <laughs> it, it's so Shaw kind of like considers you a minute as you say that and says uh, well um, I guess uh, I'll be excited to see what a, a punching uh, thing can do in combat um, ah I'll you like, heard the professional fugalist over here says, yes um, I never knew many to fight with their fists in combat except for monks maybe but uh, it's good to meet you all. Uh, I'm glad I stopped by to get uh, a bit of an idea of uh, the mercenaries I'd be working with. He says, I don't expect to have too much trouble. Um, the caravan company has paid quite a bit to uh, outfit this, uh, this caravan with extra soldiers, and of course you all as mercenaries. Um, so I imagine that uh, it wouldn't be too... Uh, too harsh of a trip. So, uh, totally raises his hand and kind of waves it at, at Shock, saying, I have a question. What is a mercenary? A mercenary is someone who uh, fights for gold. Um, basically, a, a skilled uh, specialist who has powers beyond the normal soldier, which it sounds like you do, little one. Oh, do you mean these shiny bits right here? And he, he holds out this, like he has gold, just just has it. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Which can be uh, used to get gear and uh, better outfit yourself for the next adventure. Oh, you exchange this for items? Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Well, what is this place, by the way? I've never been to this realm. As well, this is the city of Highgard. It was founded uh, several hundred years ago upon the re-emergence of our people from underground after the Twelfth Cataclysm. Uh, the city was uh, built around a huge tower that somehow survived the fires of the arcane, and he points to the north. And you would see, kind of in the setting sunlight, a humongous structure, <laughs> which I will show to you now. Uh, if anybody didn't see it, just scroll up from where we were on the map. Yeah. Ah, oh, that is genius plan. <laughs> Give you some more. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the tower rises far above any structure in the city and uh, definitely does, no- does not look like the architecture of the rest of this place. Uh, he says the uh, the Phoenix Guild control the tower now. They have many of their people there uh, studying it as well as uh, using it as a base of operations. Um, so that's why this place is called High Guard. Yes, I saw I saw that uh, tower when I came in. I didn't. I did not want to approach it though. It looked very intimidating. Also, you said a lot of words. I didn't quite catch all of it, but but that's okay. She's, uh, it's no all right, little one. We'll <laughs> help you figure stuff out if you have any questions. Just give it all to one brittle boulder over here. This is, well, unfortunately, the tower is in the middle quadrant of the city, and that's off limits to any but uh, the city councilors and the more noble of the uh, of the people who live here. Um, it's, it doesn't matter though we will we won't be uh getting involved in that um i believe we should be leaving on schedule tomorrow morning um in fact i was about to go and do a quick last uh last uh, round 
to make sure everyone has everything loaded. Uh, so if there's nothing else, I will leave you to your uh, to your rest and. Uh, um. Why? Why? Why so many extra soldiers? You say you're not expecting any trouble. This is, uh, well, the caravan was kind of attacked uh, last uh, few times we've tried to uh -huh. make this trip, and um, so far we've been unable to get supplies up to the uh, up to the people of Char. So. As for who funded this trip, uh, I can't really give you much information about that. Uh, and I'll say Dewdrop and Jimmy, with your passive insights, you don't think he's being completely honest. I just flat out say it. I say, I think this guy's lying about something. Give me a persuasion. <laughs> DC 15. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just straight up, just say it. Okay, uh, persuasion. <laughs> did it roll? Oh. Yeah, it did. So uh, he, uh, he kind of looks at you and says, uh, "Why would you say I'm lying?" Hmm. It is this the hunch I gave us. Hmm. Hey, friend. I think if we're uh, gonna be doing this to the best of our abilities, more information would always be more useful. So if you wouldn't mind sharing what the little one thinks you're hiding. Uh, give me a persuasion check again, DC 15. Oof. So okay. he, he kind of considers you a minute, uh, a moment. He says, well, I wasn't supposed to say anything about who's funding this. Um, the uh, the information was supposed to be uh, kept secret as uh, there's worry of um, rumors being started, but uh, it'll stay I... between us, friend. Yes, well, uh, please make sure it does. But um, are you any of you familiar with Lord Blackwater, Galen Blackwater? Oh, I've name. heard the name before. I do a history check. Uh, yeah, you can use history. You, uh, or actually, insight or perception. What do you want? Uh, that <laughs> would be history. Uh, probably DC no. twelve. Because he's a pretty common name. Nice. <laughs> Dude, I was there, baby. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What do I know about this person? So I guess. Uh, oh, eleven. All right. Well. <laughs> So, uh, I guess, um, Jimmy and Tirasil, interesting, because you guys aren't from this place, but maybe you've, uh, maybe you're familiar <laughs> with the name Blackwater. You don't know who Galen Blackwater is, but you've heard, uh, um, that the Council of Tyvanus, the ruling body of the Terubian Empire, the second chair on the council, uh, is, um, a woman named Patience Blackwater who apparently is pretty strong both politically and financially within the Empire. So you're guessing uh, this Galen Blackwater might be somehow related to her? I don't know if you want to say anything, but that's what Black, you're Blackwater, big players out this point. This is, yeah. Uh, I remember a lady named Patience Blackwater used to move a lot of money around these parts. This is, well... Not as much out here, but uh, yes, uh, you're correct. His family is uh, pretty influential back east. Um, <clears throat> most people don't know uh, that Galen's even out here. He's uh, kind of, well, he's kind of stepped away from a lot of the, the political scene. Um, and he mostly lives, uh, uh, I wouldn't want to say solitary, but uh, he doesn't get, like I was saying, doesn't get involved in a lot of the goings-on, except in Char itself. So anyway, just uh, make sure you don't tell anyone, please. And then, uh... oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I won't. Definitely. <laughs> says, well, uh, if that's all, I, uh, I think I should probably go get some things set up, but... Uh, I know the bar is open for a few more hours. If any of you drink, you might want to stop by there. Um, otherwise, yeah. I don't just... think I'm old enough, bud. This is why, why, why are you offering drinks to a kid? I was more talking to your friends, young one. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know I'm going. Because I get up and um, start heading in the direction. What sort of payment, payment do we get for this? 
Mm-hmm. Says, oh, they didn't tell you yet? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. I'll look up um, at Nick Confused. Actually, I'm pretty sure they said uh, 300 gold pieces per... Oh, give me a deception DC 25. <laughs> <laughs> 25? That's, That's he's asking for so much. That's oh, really that would that. they would pay you guys. Deception? Deception yeah. DC 25. That's pretty yeah. close. So he gives you a look and says, uh, I think someone must have misinformed you then. Uh, the payment is 30 gold now and 30 upon completion. Uh, each. Uh, can Jimmy say, don't gold? be a little richer if the Blackwaters are involved? This is, uh, well, I don't really have control over the payments um, other than to give out the money. <laughs> All right. Fair but enough. And blame or a... go ahead. Warforged for trying. He smiles and says, I suppose you can't, whatever a Warforged is. Uh, but I don't um, know. Here, in fact, uh, while I'm thinking about that, and he brings out a sack for each of you with uh, coins clinking around in it as he passes them around. He says, here's the uh, first of your payment. Um, you'll get the other once we get to the char. Am Maybe I able to bless you? Of course. Hey. What, uh, Nick? Um, I was... I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> I was thinking of casting... Can Nick um, cast a minor illusion on his hands to make it appear as if he only received 15 like uh, the pouch. He's, like dumping out the pouch and then trying to pretend like there's only 15. Yeah. Yeah, hey, and then hey, like hey. well, it, but as a minor illusion like make it kind of appear as a, if I'm only holding 15 coins like kind of So, I believe minor illusion does have verbal and somatic components. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Can we you hear could, you casting this yeah, spell. Yeah, you could do it, but you would like be making weird noises before, which would make the deception check a little harder. You could try. Damn. How about just the couple gold pieces? Not like, you know, so like you're missing all of like, it. Just a couple. Like yeah, five, just like one or two. Yeah, yeah like uh, one or two. Like, oh, maybe he a hand, maybe? Yeah. All right. So you uh, are emptying the gold out and you're casting an illusion spell. Uh, and you say what? Um. <laughs> oh, as the spell? Like, what, no, what do you like, say to What do you person? say to, to shock? Like, hey, I'm counting in my head over here, which is why it seems a little bit weird that I might be talking to myself, but it seems I've only got uh, 28 gold pieces. I'm missing a oh, couple. Geez. Uh, sure, give me a deception check, DC 15. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he, he kind of comes over and is looking, and he's like kind of counting himself, and as he is, his finger kind of goes through one of the coins, uh, and he says, oh. wait. <laughs> What? What's this? And now, like, he sees that the, uh, some of it is illusionary, and he gives you a bit of a look. Oh, yeah. N- never mind. I, I, I you know, <laughs> says, oh, is it, maybe is you it? gave me too much. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of crosses his uh, arms. He says, "All there, is it?" Yeah. <laughs> Here, maybe, maybe a couple of. The, uh, I miscounted. You gave me a little bit more, so I like toss him uh, a couple of my gold coins back. Uh, give me a persuasion. DC <laughs> ten. All right. There we so go. he just kind of nods and says, "All right. Uh, well, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to. Uh, maybe, maybe the lenders <laughs> gave me too much, and he just hands the money back to you." Oh, okay. Says, thank you. Thank you. That's fine. Uh, is everyone else's gold correct? Yes. Uh, I have nine uh, here. Two drops like juggling them or something. Yeah. Uh, he says, Well, I, uh, like I said, I have to check on the other caravans, but I'll be around if you need to talk about anything the evening or this evening. Um, just come get me. I'll be in the square. And he's going to take off towards the uh, the carriages unless you have something else you're going to say. No. All no. Right. So it is getting late in the evening. Uh, at this point, you can all choose to go to... Is the market to... still open? Uh, yeah, you know, it's close to sundown. I'll say the market's open for like another 20 minutes if anyone wants to run into cool. to the north here and buy some stuff. Okay. They're basically closing up right. the stalls like right now. Cool. I bought uh, nine rations. 
Okay. Yeah, just book price is fine. But yeah, book price. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. So you can buy anything from the market at book price. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you're free to explore, like go to bed and just wait till tomorrow. Uh, pretty much whatever the group wants to do. I buy some rope. Go, to feed a rope. Go to the market and buy some rope. All right. Yeah, and, I guess. Uh, oh, go ahead. And then yeah, I'm also going to the bar. Okay. So Shock told you that the bar was up north, uh, just before the gate partition leading towards the tower. Uh, is anyone else going to the bar? I'm following yeah, to the bar. A couple of the like guards. See what the okay. Uh So a few of the guards would say, uh, "Oh, uh, if you're going to the bar, can we come with you?" Obviously, the more the merrier. Let's go, friends. Says, yeah. Oh, great song, by the way. That was some amazing playing. Ah, you know, the best way I get compliments is obviously being a dwarf would be some alcohol, so let's go. Uh, give me a persuasion, DC 8. Do -do -do. Says, yeah, you got it, bud. Drinks on me. Uh, so... Are walking... Oh, okay. go ahead. I was just say, while y'all are walking away, um, I guess uh, Toad Leaf would fly up to Nick and say, "What is a bar?" Oh, um, I believe it has something to do with. Um... Can you show me what it is? Um, I think one could show you. Does Dewdrop look yes. like he's old enough to drink? <laughs> no, he looks like a small right. shot. Yeah. I say, <laughs> he's it's a little, little Dewdrop. <laughs> hey, yeah, it'll be fine, kid. Why don't you hang out here with the other one? And, uh, you know, I'll tell you about bars another time. <laughs> Wait, why are, why do I not get to go to the bar now? I think you're a little too young there. Little too How old do you have to be? I'm 127. Ah, shit, no, really? Am I not allowed to yeah, go? Yeah, I knew that. I, I was just, I was just seeing what the old man wanted. Yeah, what he thought. But yes, <laughs> I knew right, that. Come I, on, I, little I one. As I grab my arm around Dewdrop, I'm just, let's go. All right, so okay. who is going to the bar and who's just kind of hanging out? I think we should all stick together. If you guys would like to join. Not for me. Yeah, Jimmy's going to the bar. I okay. will stay here and oh, Toad Leaf is going to the bar. Alright, so Tirasil is just kinda hanging out here, uh maybe getting his supplies together and going to sleep. Uh I've been typing it basically he's doing his uh meditations and prayers. Ah, okay. So yeah. After you set up his tent. He's uh communing with the spirits. Alright, but the rest mm -hmm. of you. Is Bean going? Yeah. I think everyone is going, but Tearsil. You just gonna try to sneak in. Uh, so you oh, head north. They don't party when you're that young. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I just let uh, die as a kid. As you approach the bar, uh, there is a strong wh whiff of pipe weed in the air, as well as the sounds of uh, singing and uh, probably the strumming of a lute. Uh, at the door, you would see a couple of. Uh, fairly inebriated uh, guards walking out who like are like, hey, to the group as they walk by. And the other guard says, I want to be like that. All right. Um, wait, the kid's coming too? That. He looks to Bean. Yeah. Says, uh, I don't think you're old enough, little guy. I d I'm hungry. We're just getting him some food. Oh, uh, I don't know. He says, Fish oh. and chips. All right, all right. Let's, uh, let's just head in. <laughs> Uh, so you head into the bar again uh, once you kind of open the door. There's some very strong uh, smells coming from inside, uh, mostly uh, smoke and uh, probably ale. Uh, you would see a bard up on stage who is not doing very well. Uh, a couple of uh, tankards have already been hurled at him. Um, and a bunch of just uh, looks like a grouping of like laborers and farmers who just got off work and are enjoying their evening. Um, as you take a seat, a woman comes over and says, uh, what can I get all of you? Uh, I say that I I know that guard's going to have a drink really if you tired. could bring it up to me on the stage. 
And I was like, don't worry, I'll fix the situation. I got something. And I go up to start playing with the other bard. Oh, uh, and join I don't know if you're supposed to. Um, uh, I just go anyways. All right. Uh, so Juan gets up on stage. Uh, a couple of drunk people are like, yeah, new bard. Get rid of this guy. I just <laughs> join him. He's playing the what? The liar? Uh, loot. He says, what are you loot? doing? I said, don't worry, friend. We'll part. We'll get through this together. <laughs> as I uh, pull out a horn as an accompaniment. All right, so you so, start doing uh, playing a horn. Yeah. So as he was uh, as he was walking, I didn't get a chance to type it. As he was walking away, I do druidcraft on on his instrument and make it smell like a skunk as he's walking up. All right. <laughs> so instrument. Uh, as you pull out your instrument, a extremely uh, abhorrent smell uh, uh, attacks your <laughs> senses, and you're like, "Ooh!" I leave that one there. there. I leave whatever he cast it on. I just leave it there, and then I go grab the other instrument. Oh, I'm like, ah, I a, have weed. You have a second I got instrument. I have I have a lyre, a horn, a pan flute, and a drum. <laughs> All right, never mind. Damn. You got some. You what got a bunch that? of. You're ready. All right. Which uh, Which one are you grabbing? I'm gonna pull out the drum now since he since my other one's stinky. He goes, ah, it must be the pipe weed. <laughs> <laughs> it's some real good stuff, you know. He says, uh, oh, uh, all right. Um, go ahead and give me a performance check. Alright, so what kind of music are you playing? Uh what was the guy playing? Uh, he was struggling and failing uh, to play kind of a war ballad. I'm just going to try to like amp up what he was playing and have join him and try to make him look a little bit better and have people not be pissed off at him and be like an accompaniment to him. Okay, so he is continuing to play very poorly, uh, but you are kind of pulling it out. Uh, the crowd quiets down for a moment as the two of you are playing then uh they as i do this can i do a bardic inspiration on this friend <laughs> oh uh yeah sure give me a d was it six roll yeah right. oh so not much help but still your 15 is kind of carrying the performance uh, and there is some clapping now and some uh, drunk people singing along as a couple of coins come flying up on stage. Woo! Okay. Yeah. I, I immediately tell them, like, as the coins, I kind of grab them up and I'm like, don't worry, bud, we got this. And I was like, a round of drinks for the bar. Oh, you're, you're offering to pay for the bar? I'm going to buy a round <laughs> for the bar, yeah. Huzzah! Uh, give me another performance check with advantage. I assume you're going to keep playing. Yeah. All right. uh, oh, well, he's doing a little bit better. Um, and together, you guys are getting a lot more uh, cheering and uh, some more coins as the bar is definitely taking you up on that offer. Um, that is going to cost you 10 gold pieces. <laughs> aye, aye. How much gold that was thrown up on the stage? Uh, like eight silver. Okay. I'll just oh. pocket the eight <laughs> silver. That's fine. 10 gold pieces subtracted. All right, and your table gets a round of drinks as well. So the bartender or, or the barmaid comes up and gives you. Oh hell yeah! Meal. Uh, she says, "On the bard." Uh, oh, that is great. What uh, what flavor is it? Uh, <laughs> ale flavored. <laughs> she kind of blinks oh, and at you. Oh, I've never tasted it. Thank you so much. Wait, how old are you? I am one hundred and twenty-seven years old. Oh, all right. Well, I guess that's old enough, and she just walks away. <laughs> Soldiers are both and looking I at you now. Boom ale. He uh, he just dives into it. No, no, he's not that small. But he picks it up and starts to drink it. Yeah, you're like the size of beans. I think you're both small. Uh, yeah, two foot. I don't know how tall beans is. Two and a half feet. Oh. So boom oh. over you. I, while I'm playing on stage two, I just randomly look over at Beans and I want to inspire him to have a fun time tonight. <laughs> oh my god! Inspire Beans. All right. What do you What do you do to inspire him? I start like I start like uh, trying to just like 
look over at him and be like hype him up and make sure he's like trying to have fun since it's the first time in the bar. So you're just like yelling at <laughs> playing some music. Playing. Yeah, I'll beans, just yell over beans, 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 and I try getting the like Max the crowd to join in. Yeah. <laughs> the, the audience is a little confused. They're like, "Where? Where are beans? What are you talking about?" Hey. I'm sitting at my ta at the table, uh, trying to read a book. Maybe look feeling <laughs> embarrassed. Yeah. You all, um, notice a smell um, coming Jeez, from we go again. Uh, to toad leaf. Uh, he's he smells like fresh brownies. Ooh. Oh, uh, Paul, were you saying something? I was saying, can I consume ale? Uh, so <laughs> generally, I think Warforged. <laughs> And eat and drink, though they don't benefit much from it. Um, I think they just kind of eject it from their bodies later. Uh, that's kind of up right, to right, you right, if right. you wanna if you wanna be able to do that. I think that he can, he but doesn't do need to. But for you. He has learned that it helps, like socially, smooth things over if he does. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess he's like, yeah, hail everybody. Now remind me, are Warforged immune to poison? Because that's basically what Al is. Yes. Poison. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so are. you could right drink now. it, but it wouldn't really do much like to make you tipsy or anything. Yeah, he's mainly just sort of like sloshing it around in a merry fashion. Just like draining it into his mouth. Go, 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 go. And he's like, hey, I'm having a great time with you guys. We're all a team, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so the soldiers are definitely, uh, and actually a couple of people at the bar are kind of looking at the group as you all are an interesting uh, group of characters. Uh, one of the soldiers would say, um, so how much did they pay you guys to do this? Just out of curiosity. We're getting paid? I look around you guys are getting paid. Way. How much are you getting paid? Says, well, we're just getting standard uh, standard fee. Um, not much. Mm -hmm. I just assumed they had sp uh, splurged a bit on uh, mercenaries. No one knows where the gold came from, but this uh, this is definitely a much more uh, um, guarded caravan than most. Um, let's see. Dewdrop would hold out his new bag of shinies and say, They gave me 30 of these shiny gold pieces. Would you like one? Uh, sure. <laughs> there's a gold would you like one over there oh yeah i'll take one too there you go there's a shiny little gold piece for you uh, hey thanks man this is well well you're good i'm not a man i'm i'm a fairy well, uh, thank you uh fairy <laughs> this is no i guess i guess nick leans over to dewdrop and he's like hey um if you're just handing them out, <laughs> you mind uh, giving me a couple? Like I said earlier, um, I think they missed a couple for me, so that, that would really help me out, man. Oh, there's Fair. no problem looking through. How many would you like? I have, I have, I have eighty of these gold pieces. <laughs> you know, one, one or two, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever you can spare. You could have robbed this fairy just now. I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> okay, he gives you one. Hey, thanks, man. He says, well, well like I said, I'm not the man. <laughs> I was, uh... What's I... that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And the guard <laughs> says, well, I was just kind of, <laughs> just kind of curious, um, did they say anything to any of you about why they brought in mercenaries and so many other guards? Like, this is just a standard trip to Char, isn't it? Uh, didn't, haven't the caravans been getting robbed lately? This is, wait, what? They've been, well, I mean, there's always, like, robberies here and there from some small bandit groups, but, um, hey, this yeah, just seems the, excessive. Uh, we were told that, uh, the caravans have been getting raided, and, uh, the past few trips to Char have not been successful because the caravans were raided by bandits or something. Hmm. He says, well, it's, uh, it's interesting. No, I, I hadn't heard anything about uh, caravans being raided, but I guess that would make sense. Huh. Yeah. 
And the other one says, I told you, they brought us along to be, uh, to be meat shields. Probably gonna get killed out there. He says, well, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of us. I'm sure we'll be okay. And we got these guys. You guys seem like, uh, I mean, they hired a sword. kid, so. Are you <laughs> actually a kid? I thought you were some kind of, uh, gnome or something. Well, yes. Yes, I am a gnome. As well, uh, I was just curious. Um, but uh, hey, thanks. Uh, thank uh, your friend up there on stage for the drinks. Hi. Yeah, uh, for some reason, they like to use small children as soldiers here. I do not know why this little beans fellow is is is, is adventuring. He's quite as small as he as he's I, even smaller than than beans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Child uh, labor is cheaper than adult labor. So, is there anything in particular any of you are doing other than just kind of drinking and talking? As the night goes, uh, I think that Jimmy Nick's wants just, to try yeah, to participate in bar games of some type. <laughs> oh, to just a coincidence! I have dice or darts or pool. I think Jimmy has been around a lot of seedy dives in his time. <laughs> I, I do have a, a dice set on me. I'll play uh, dice. Let's play some dice. So you guys are going to play some dice. Uh, did you say something, Nick? I thought I heard you. Yes, sorry, I... No, I'm just hanging out around Beans, making sure he's all right and nobody's... Eating my grilled cheese. <laughs> Coming or around. chicken tendies. Yeah, I'm messing <laughs> around with his chicken tendies. All right, just keeping an eye out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, are you guys gambling, or are you just uh, playing for fun? You want to gamble? Ooh. I feel like, I mean, within that the context, we probably we really have to. A character would gamble, for sure. All right, let's 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 bet a gold piece just on a d20. All right, sure. Well, it would be a, uh, it would be oh. a dice set roll. Oh, well, I so already crit two. failed. I crit failed both times, so here's a gold piece. All right, so yeah, all right. First, uh, first game of dice will go to Jimmy. Uh, yeah. A couple of people come over like, hey, can I play? Uh, you guys doing yeah, dice I'm, over uh, here? Yeah. Uh, yes, we are. All right. So uh, we don't have to do too many games, but how much do you want to wager against them? I'll say uh, up to 10 gold. Five gold. I'll do five. We'll do five. Yeah, I'll do five too. Okay. Uh, give me a dice set roll. roll How does dice. he have to do a dice set? Uh, if you click on the tool, it should ask you what ability score you want to roll with. Uh, you would use dexterity or intelligence, I'll say. Couldn't do charisma? For dice, probably not. Give me unless, the action. I thought ask. I'm not sure unless you can explain how you're using your charisma to roll oh. dice better. Cool. I love rolling like shit. Slide of hand's another thing. Yeah, that's why I said dex. Because <clears throat> you could probably do some sleight of hand with it. Uh, what about Jimmy? I uh, I tell Jimmy, hey, hey, bud, let me inspire you and we'll split the winnings. Oh. I don't have dice. Should I just make a roll? Oh, um, you're you don't know you don't have training in dice set. I do. Yeah, no, they I, don't. I was just playing dice with him. All right, uh, just give me a dexterity roll then, or or I, it's either or. I kind of whisper over to him. I was like, "Hey, hey, let me inspire you here for this roll, and we can split the winnings." Yeah. Would Jimmy do that? take inspiration respond. yeah I'll, I'll give you a d6 to add on if and if you win we'll split yeah for sure all right so how do you inspire him i'm just like all right come on jimmy i know i rolled like shit you got this you got this all right so you hype man him <laughs> uh give me a d6 roll this is your second okay jimmy looked around this for my third third so i'm done for the day Oh you my know how, like, God. Just, <laughs> really yes, well. the best. <laughs> you get like a pretty lady to uh, blow on your dice. Jimmy gets him to blow on his dice. Juan oh. blows on your dice. All right. uh, Wait, what's Dewdrop doing now? No, no, no. My bad. 
<laughs> so now, do I roll the d6 or did he roll the d6? Uh, he rolled a one. Okay, got it. So what did you get? You got 14 plus one would be 15. All right. Uh, so how much did you bet? Five gold. Five gold. You put five. All right. So unfortunately, the third guy won. Um, ah, damn. So, however, uh, do drop. Or wait, sorry, yeah. no, Jimmy. With your passive perception of 13, you think he cheated? You noticed some uh, shenanigans when he was rolling. Okay, He's Jimmy says. Uh, Jimmy says, "Hey, that ain't league rules, baby." What? What are you talking about? As he's like grabbing the coins. Jimmy says, "I play league rules, and league rules say that uh, it's best two or three. <laughs> uh, give me a persuasion. <laughs> DC, I'll say ten. As you're doing that, uh, Dewdrop finishes his his big mug of ale. He said that was quite tasty. <laughs> Jimmy, I think I saw him. Uh, his elbow went over the line. Uh, give me a persuasion. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, just. Uh, yeah. So he says. Uh, uh, I'm... Yeah, I guess if you want to lose more money, sure. He says, I'll bet again. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't really catch him, but I convinced him to do two or three. Oh, yeah, so, best two or so, three. Wow. Best two. We or play three. again. Oh, so, oh, so you weren't going to gamble again? Um, I don't really want to. In fact, uh, did I see how he cheated? Uh, you think the dice might be loaded the way it was moving. Okay, did he take the dice when we were done? Yeah. His own did he, dice. like, put them in his pocket or something? Yeah, he just basically, like, grabbed them up and quickly pocketed them. Okay, say, Jimmy's uh, gonna... Go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, I think going this time around, uh, maybe we just stick with the same set of dice for everybody. Uh... So you, so you said you did want to roll again, or is this like you're just trying to do best two or three? Best two out of three. So he says, "I'll bet again, but I'm not just doing two or three. If you wanna, if you wanna go for some more money, you gotta put more money up." Say double or nothing. Ten, we'll bet ten gold this time. He nods. He says, "All right, but I'm using my dice." Do we, lucky dice. do we table pocket if I want to like intimidate this guy instead, or do I just like play that out? What's uh, the precedent? So here? you would say what you're saying to intimidate him, then you'd make an intimidate check. Right, but so generally gameplay wise, if do I talk about that with the other party members, or if I want to make a decision like that, do I just have to sort of do uh, it? You can just do it. I mean, they can like get mad at you if you're. And I talk about it with them if I don't want to. Oh, I fuck see what you're saying. Mind. Like, can you? So you can't ask yeah. them out of character. Uh, you would have to do whatever okay. you're doing in character. That's okay. Why, that's uh, why spells like to mental uh, telepathy and stuff come in handy. Can Can Jimmy just start to like sort of like. Uh, aggressively fidget, like, fidget and like tap his fingers and like side eye the guy and sort of look at um who am I gambling with? I'm sorry, I'm just getting the names to the people wrote down. Uh, uh, Juan, Juan and uh, two guys Juan. who you don't know. And so I it's like sort of like look at Juan like can you believe this fucker and try to like put out the energy of like if this keeps going I'm, I'm I look at him person. and I I look at him and I go now I ain't saying something did or didn't happen i'm just saying for equal playing field we should all use the same dice i don't think it's fair you're using your <clears throat> lucky dice uh give me a persuasion and you said uh so were you trying to intimidate him jimmy no uh, jimmy's sort of like trying to non-verbally at the table uh send signals to juan that He's getting ready to fight this guy if things go wrong. And uh, so the guy would say, uh, like, I'm using my... up. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So he says, I'm using my dice if we're playing. Otherwise, I'm taking this money and walking. Your choice. Okay, when he says that, Jimmy says, let me see those dice. He 
says, they're my lucky dice. You don't get to see them. And Jimmy says, I bet they are. And he stands up, and I want to do an intimidation check. All right. I stand right up next to him as well, joining him, because sure, now I'm catching can, on. You can both make an intimidation check. Oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> Nick. <Nick's laughs> so the guards are like, oh, shit, what's going on? I trip um, when I get up. Jimmy just, <laughs> like, falls over 350 pounds right through the table. The guys I fall like, over the guard. The? Wrong. How does he react to the intimidation? Uh, so he would say, uh, look, uh, I don't want any trouble. You guys lost, so just accept it. Move on. I'm getting out of here. I call uh, the Jimmy's guards picking over. himself up. I call the guards <laughs> over and be like, guards, this guy over here is cheating. Uh, there aren't any guards in the bar right now. Are you I thought just you like... said there were. Soldiers, oh, you mean, you mean your caravan guards? Oh, oh, the caravan guards? Are there some soldiers in there, too? Or uh, no? There's no town guards here. There's just the guys who came here with you, those two guys who are talking to you. Um, but uh, you don't think yeah. they have any you know, authority to arrest people. I call them over and be like, hey, guys, we're getting swindled over here, and I want to call them over to join us. Uh, give me persuasion, DC 15. So they're like, oh, there's some trouble brewing. So they like crack their knuckles. They get up like, hey, what's going on over here? And I say, if we just give us the money back, we'll call it even. Uh, give me an intimidation with advantage. Just both the guards are there now. It says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You got this, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy is like. <laughs> picking himself up off the floor. It's got but can I see how about this? Can I say that he like as he gets up, he like tears off his canvas undershirt to reveal his like metal form to try to get advantage on it? Like show them your gears or something? <laughs> yeah, just be like, I'm a fucking metal man, bro. Uh Beans is gonna walk over and tap Jimmy on the back and guide him and saying yes you are giving him guidance <laughs> oh, right, thank so you Vince. go ahead and uh you do a little chant as you tap him uh go ahead and do an intimidation with uh sure i'll give advantage in a d4 <laughs> we're gonna do it <laughs> we're gonna t oh, oh yeah, i got yeah. one so 19 plus a d4 you want to like or roll that d4 yeah, just a D4. All right, so 23. <laughs> the guy's like, Jesus, uh, here. And he throws the money over, which kind of clanks on the floor. And like him and the other guy just run out. A uh, bunch of people are all looking at the group at this point as like the tavern's gone completely quiet. As like hey. you're standing there with all these like metal gears exposed. Someone and I know, just in the in the quiet uh, as you're standing there, someone yells, what the fuck is that? He's part of the protector. We're going to protect the caravan, but ignore those cheats that caused the scene. Another round of drinks. Hey, and I just yell, drinks. it's magic. It's magic. <laughs> uh, it's magic. Well, I'm magical. They heard, this is a spell. They, they heard more drinks and everyone starts cheering again. Yeah. Yeah, great. Let's go with that. So you spend another 10 gold buying uh, a round for the bar? <laughs> yeah, I do. All right. So the uh, once again, the barmaid's going around. Everyone is uh, getting really blitzed at this point uh, as they uh, are getting a bunch of free drinks off of you. Um, I just put my arm around Jimmy. I'm like, hey, hell of a show there, guy. Uh, does anyone want to do anything else as the evening presses on? Uh, I would uh, want to head back to the caravan area. Um, Nick, do you want to come with? I don't know if yeah. you want to stay here and continue drinking. No, I'm, I'm ready to uh, call it a night and go check out this caravan. Uh, Tearsil. Oh, yeah, go Tearsil's ahead. not here, but the guards uh, yeah. would nod. They say, yeah, we're probably going to head back, too. Hey, thanks for the drinks, Juan. They kind of pat you on the shoulder. Uh, you guys should uh, have, have in, in, enjoy the uh, feast. It might be a few days before you have another hot meal. Since we already ate. Oh, and drank enough? Yeah, we got a bunch of free drinks off one here. 
Yeah. Uh, it's all for preparation for the travel tomorrow, friends. And Jimmy, I... I don't know what the hell you are, but holy crap, you're a weirdo. <laughs> He's on our side. I'm glad Jimmy you're on gets our up side. and says, "You're all right too, pal," and like pats him on the back <laughs> like, way oh. too hard. Yeah. Tink. Ow. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks. And they just kind of run out at this point. Uh, Nick, maybe we find a uh, tier sill and check in with him. We yes. might want to figure out what we're transporting before going out on this journey. I agree. I agree. Um, so, do, uh, Toadstool is just like chilling. He's actually really enjoying this drink. He's on a second one now. Those are both free, too. Yeah. <laughs> do. So. I just wanted to pop in a second and say that it says on the character sheet that I don't need to eat, drink, or breathe and am yeah. immune to <laughs> disease. So if you want to like work that in in a less overpowered way, that's fine. No, that's no, legitimately a thing. It's not, it's not really yeah, overpowered. That's uh, just All means right. you don't need rations or anything. So you're uh, it's easier for you to survive in the wild. Walk under the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. It'll um, take a while, uh, yeah. and you right. might distract things, but They're yeah, all... you could do the water, ocean thing, too. Yeah, it might not be safe down there. Um, but anyway, uh, so you're heading back? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, I would be trying to find uh, two still. Can, so, I, can, I, can I bring the drink with me, or do I have to leave it here? Uh... You uh, have to leave it there. You can't bring the uh, the ale out of the ale place. That's their well, mug. That is no fun. I'll just have to stay here and finish it. I'll meet up with y'all. All right. So you stay behind to finish your drink. Uh, at this point, it's pretty late at night. Uh, definitely, uh, the crickets are all chirping, and um, there's a bit of a cold uh, wind on the... Uh, on the streets, as you get back to the fire, uh, the two guards go pass out. They're pretty tired. Um, what do you... Uh, oh, and you would see that Tirasil is there, probably still in prayer. Uh, I don't know much. Well, I guess I would uh, cast a message and try to tell Pat if we talk to Tirasil. Okay. And say, uh, I don't mean to interrupt um, but uh, it might be worthwhile to figure out what we're transporting. Let me ask the ancestors. Okay, let's go. <laughs> cool. Um, I guess we're. Oh, Nick, do you see anywhere uh, away from everybody where I can start casting magic? Um. And I would want to begin ritually casting Detect Magic Yeah. whenever uh, we're away from everybody. There's a tent nearby. <clears throat> you want to go sit in your tent and do it? Cool. There's a tent good. right here. Oh, that sounds great. Here, still set up his tent while everybody was talking about coin with the guy. Perfect. All right. Mm, go so inside. You go into your tent and cast Detect Magic. Okay, so you have detect magic for ten minutes. Cool. Um, I would want to start walking up and down the caravan with Tearsil and Nick. All right. Mm -hmm. So you spend some time walking around, but uh, you don't find any magical auras coming from the carts. Um, you'd be very surprised if they were transporting magic goods. Those are quite expensive. All right. Well, can uh, I just start opening stuff? Anything? You want to just start oh, opening I don't crates? think we should do that. That might oh. cause some uh, tensions, but uh, okay. maybe uh, if we figure out where the important things are. What sort of things are they transporting? Okay. So, yeah. uh, it looks like it's mostly just food and uh, your basic supplies. Um, at least from a quick glance you don't see anything that's out of the ordinary cool. great yeah it just seems like normal uh town stuff 
Okay. Uh, Tirso, you got any thoughts? The ancestors have not told me anything. I'm thinking that there's more to this than just the delivering food. Something else is going on. All right, and I'll say about at this point, your uh, fairy comes down the street mm. while he finished mm. with his drinking. Do I need to make like a con or anything? Uh, if you want to give me a con save DC eight, I mean, do you feel like you were drinking a lot more than everyone? Well, I mean, he had two, two whole what pints and he's two foot. So I don't know. You tell me. (laughs) Uh, sure. Give me a con save then. Oh, no, he's fine. Yeah. He's just (laughs) like, Hmm, tasty. As he comes down the block. Uh, cool. So, uh, yeah. Some time has has passed. Uh, does anyone want to do anything else, or are you ready to go to sleep? Would there have been the say... opportunity to buy a few arcane components? Uh, it, probably not now. It's like middle of the night. Nothing's cool. going to be open. Yeah, yeah. We, could... we missed that opportunity, didn't we? Possibly do it in the morning. Cool. All right. So you're turning yeah. in for the evening. I just want to say I have a thing called Sentry's Rest where I don't sleep. I just kind of remain motionless and inactive for a period of time. So I'm just going to set up outside the caravan and just watch it to see if anything suspicious happens during the night. Just kind of stand there scanning the area. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. Good yeah. Uh, Can I find uh, like a tree to sleep in or something? I'm going to put Jimmy on. All watches. Uh, sure. <laughs> so I'll say, like, uh, you fly up on a, a tree kind of near the market and are okay. staying up there. Uh, so time is passing. Uh, at around 1 a.m., um, you'd probably notice this uh, first, Jimmy, with uh, Sentry and your passive perception. Uh, you see shock coming towards the group seeming a little uh, nervous he uh comes up to you uh i guess is anyone guard or are you just all kind of sleeping i guess jimmy was jimmy's uh, on i guess i'm on guard. Guard in a sense i sort of have i don't know the mechanics of this but I, I, I imagine i have to sort of awaken myself and activate or something yeah so but you- if i see someone Coming up to me i think i would do that yeah you can just kind of activate yourself that would basically just stop the rest um, but yeah, he uh, comes into where the group is. Sees uh, Jimmy is kind of alert, and he says, uh, "Hey, uh, I was wondering, uh, can you guys help me with something?" He seems very nervous. Uh, I thought we were already helping you with something, sport. Says it's uh, not exactly something to do with the trip tomorrow. Um, there might be some trouble, and uh, I might need some backup. What exactly? Uh, so at this point, you're all kind of groggily, like, waking up. Go ahead, Nick. What were you saying? What exactly do you mean by trouble? He says, well, I was supposed to get a package um, during the evening, something that was going to be transported. But the guy I was supposed to get it from, uh, he ain't showing up. He's not where he's supposed to be. I think something happened, and I might need some help going to see if he's okay. Where? He says, I wouldn't normally ask this. Um, it was, uh, he kind of seems a little nervous. He says, where? There's a there's an old mm. uh, ruined sewer grate nearby. And it leads into a, a ruined area of like an old uh, part of the Dwarven city that used to be here. What does he look like? He says, uh, can we uh, talk and mm. walk? I'm game. Ancestors are fine with this. All right. Others? What about the rest of you? All right, let's go. Been looking for a brawl after all the drinks. This thing, so I appreciate it. <laughs> and almost getting this. swindled. Uh, so Are you trying? Going, I'm going. Go ahead. Someone saying something. Well, oh. I don't. 
you just tell us before we go what's really going on, man. Are you trying to lead us somewhere into a trap? Uh, Is this about the thing that you lied about? Give me a persuasion, Nick. Uh, DC 12. Can I just click persuasion on my thing or no? Yes. Yeah. If you click persuasion oh, okay. on the sheet, it'll roll. Uh, okay. Yeah, says, he, All right. Uh, well, so mm -hmm. there's uh, a bit more to this uh, trip than just delivering the supplies, which is one of the reasons why we have the funding. We're supposed to sneak something into Char, but apparently uh, the local thief guild, uh, the Blood Hand, found out about it. And uh, I think they might have nabbed my guy. We got to get this package. This is like the uh, one of the main reasons we're even doing this. It was supposed to be nice and clean, but yeah, now he he hasn't showed up, so something's going on. Okay. So sorry, I wasn't straight. I wasn't supposed to tell anyone about this. Like no one should even know we're transporting this thing. And that, and before yeah. you ask, I don't know what it is. I just know that I'm supposed to get it to Char. Okay. And you do think he's being honest about that. Uh, so you are moving through the city until you get to a northern area over here where there is an old grate uh, that's kind of partially off. It says this was where I was supposed to meet him, but uh, he never came. So I'm guessing he's probably inside somewhere still. He what says, does he look like? What does the package look like? Says the package is just a, a normal like sack with uh, some kind of box in it. Like I said, I don't know what's inside it. It's a lock box. Uh, the guy himself is a human, probably about 22 years old, uh, um, part of the local thieves guild. Uh, brown hair, brown eyes, nothing too distinct. He says, uh, but just be ready. I'm not sure what we're going to find. I'm hoping we can find him quickly and nothing's happened, but, you know, that's probably not the case. Do it. Alright, so you Let's do it. head into the tunnels. How, like, how deep is this entrance? Like, is it like 10 feet? So, 69 feet. The great, uh, like, once you take it off and go into the pipe, you kind of have to duck down a little there. Uh, it slopes for a ways, then down below is a kind of a foul smelling uh, area. Um, but as you get a little deeper in following the tunnel, the uh, tunnel widens a bit and it becomes less gross. Uh, actually, history might tell you something. Oh, I uh, got that. DC I got, is I got me some history. 15. Oh, I got that. Give me the spring. I'm gonna roll it. I got that, no. I missed. Alright. So the architecture definitely would look strange yes. to you. Yes. Because That's a building! <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a tunnel. Um... <laughs> But yeah, you, you can't uh, make out much just Whoa. from looking at it. Uh, as you get deeper in, uh, you definitely think this wasn't part of the, part of the original sewer design, as uh, the structure looks way different. And you are coming down a tunnel when you would see some lights up ahead. Shocks and some oh, shit. I go ahead and cast uh, Mage Armor. Uh, do any of you have a light source? I imagine some of us would need to. Why would I need that light source? I have a torch. Because ah. Jimmy's blind, and Ez is blind. I'm pulling you all I'm, the, I'm uh, blind? Uh, just give me a sec. I have a torch, yeah. I have you do not ten have torches. Blind. Okay. Yeah, uh, vision. Yeah. I guess Shock would have a torch, but if you want, you can light one yourselves. Um... This. I would also cast Mage Armor on my. Cast this. Uh, so he would see the light sources as well. He says, uh, shit, there's a bunch of people up ahead. 
This might get ugly. I'm not sure what they're doing here. Just be ready. Okay. And actually, this might be a good place to stop. Because we are at about 8.30, and this might get into a whole other thing. Yay. Oh, yeah. But whole yeah. other thing. Uh, so this is kind of the beginning. Um, uh, hopefully everyone had fun. Yeah, that was great. Uh. We can move more into the story next time. As we yeah, it's, we spent like, what, half our time basically finishing up builds and everything and getting everybody situated. So, yeah, I feel like we still did a lot. That was the yeah, goal of the session. Yeah, it's usually session yeah. zero, but now uh, going forward, we can get right into it. So, yeah, good right. game, everyone. That's great. Thank, Thank you for the session, and uh, I really appreciate it. Are we doing that. MVP votes for the very first oh, yeah. one? Uh, let's do, so give me a whisper with who you think should be MVP for the session. Which, uh, um, the command is... Basically, and then MVP is the parentheses. MVP is just the uh, who you thought maybe played their character really well, did something really really cool. Um, you know, thinks you deserve like who you thought was best played that week um, for whatever reasons you want. And if they win, they get inspiration, which allows them to get advantage on a roll. Yeah. And do I type that? Command into slash it before whisper. I send the message. Yeah, so yeah slash basically w. without the parentheses, just um, into the roll twenty uh, chat. And the name is whoever you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. So all right. Whoever you're voting for. GM's name. Uh, slash GM slash W space GM space name. Whoever uh, you want to be. W space GM. Okay. All right. That would have, that would have, that would have. Wait, Story points let you like re-roll it after you see it. Um, inspiration, you say you call it before, and it gives you advantage yeah. on your roll. Yeah. All right. So it was close, but uh, Juan, you are the winner with four votes. Congrats. So you gain inspiration. Uh, All right. Uh, any? It was, it was close with four votes. Four votes. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was almost tied, but it was not oh, tied. So but... yeah. Um, well, yeah. Any uh, yeah. questions, comments? No, that was fun. I appreciate you uh, putting this together for us. Yeah. yeah thanks, Are Luke. Tired? Are y'all tired of the fair yet? No, honestly, I thought Never. I would be. <laughs> but Never. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, we can, uh, we can pick this up next week, then. All right. So, I had a great time. Yeah, see you all Good next week. Guys. And, Matt, you're right. still inspired. Uh, um, just let you... You sure? No, it have been more than 10 minutes, so he's... Yeah. Oh, it only lasts for 10 time. minutes? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, that's fucking... Makes sense. <laughs> Just to let you know, I've I've got my notes from the game up today. Right, I'll great. actually do oh, a sweet. journal Thank entry you. later. Thanks. Thanks. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Have a good All night, right. everyone. Have a good night. night. What'd you think, Nick? Oh yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> no, yeah, I figure it's normally later than you're up. But yeah, it's going to take some getting used to. You were, I, I, I saw you were like all active for like the first like hour and a half, two hours. And then you kind of just started like. Well, <laughs> there might be some combat next time, so we can get it. I'm just, that. yeah, I'm just getting used to everything. Soaking it all in, you know. It does take some getting used Me to. Too. But uh, yeah, you guys were doing like pretty well with uh, your improv. So I'm glad that you were like RPing and getting into it. Yeah, improv I can do. It's all the uh, software and control cool. systems I have to learn. Yeah, and the roll twenty stuff, it just takes some getting used to. But it gets I felt really overwhelmed the first few weeks when I was learning it, but it catches on pretty quick. Yeah. Don't you have a video, Lou, on how to do everything? Uh yeah, I have a video on the 
the sheet and character creation um, under the <clears throat> Discord, I think on the tutorial video section, if you guys want to look look at that and give you some ideas. Right. But, yeah, I uh, just started to sort of piece together how that all worked this afternoon. But Yeah, it's uh, uh get... it's not super intuitive, but yeah, you get the hang of it. Yeah. All right, good night everybody. Have a good night, Nick. Night. Yeah, have a good well, night. Yeah. Good night. All so right. Like, yeah, I'm off. I feel like everyone uh keep getting messages from people who uh want me to click on their 2D adventure projects that I know are hacked. Like I know these people like I got like three of these today, which is weird. Huh. That's not good. Everyone's getting hacked. Don't click on any links. Just don't don't ever do it. Usually a smart idea unless you know what it is. I don't really don't. Like a couple of days ago, uh, someone did this and they're like, no, don't click it. I was hacked. And I was like, yeah, I know. It happened to my <laughs> friend. Dude, it happens all the time. I think you know I work as a banker, but people are like, oh, your account is possibly, you know, fraudulent. Click on this link to verify it's you. And then they like give away their online banking information. So they come in and it's like, well, it's, it's all their. <laughs> It's really bad with Discord because apparently, like, all you have to do is click uh, a certain type of link, and they like get control of your Ooh. Discord account. It happened I've to gotten, one of my friends. Damn, I've gotten uh, people have like you know where your computer freezes up, and it's like your account has been locked by Microsoft. Call this number to resolve it, and it's some kind of malware. Yeah, and old these old people call it and just give away all their information. Yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't surprise me. Like, 30% of my day every day is just people. A lot of time, I guess most of the time it's like debit card. Like, yeah, someone got to hold their debit card information and, you know, whatever. But, yeah, 30% of my day every day is just like fraud. And I'm like, dude, this fucking sucks. Boomers. It cracks me up. Then some people like come in freaking the fuck out and they're like, yeah, I got this thing, but I didn't click it. But, you know, I was really concerned and worried that something might have happened. And, you know, and I'm like, well, you didn't do anything. You didn't give any information away. You're totally fine. They go, oh, okay. Okay. Okay.